and how, what are some ways, like you said, yeah, we focus on relaxing, we focus on these things. What are some ways um, to increase the health of our gut? So what we, we, we kind of think about things in terms of like pillars of health, right? Like, what are you eating and drinking? Are you moving? Are you sleeping? Are you, what are your coping mechanisms? Mm. And also what are your social supports? Right. So when we're looking at like gut specifically, we can talk about like eating green leafies and tending to try to eat the rainbow and drinking water and trying to avoid caffeine closer to, to bedtime. Right. But we also have to take into account the fact that like um, you need to be sleeping. Right. Like when I wake up for an early flight, there were days when I used to go fly, uh, you know, my stomach was upset the whole rest of the day because I missed out on sleep. Right. Um, right. When I used to study again, type A, like when I, I was studying, I'd like wake up early and go to sleep late. My stomach was a mess. I was, I, I was, you know, th those things, well, there's no, I don't like to think of us as like, you know, the mind body connection that we are, we're one in the same. And so, yeah you know, you're you renting, like I was on this naturopathic, um, um, summit, summit. Thank you for English language. I appreciate it. And, um, you know, I always refer to naturopaths for those pieces, but like they were talking about poo and I'm like, I can talk about poo because, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot that we can do from a pelvic, from a public health perspective, like mm -hmm. making sure we're breathing every day, our pelvic floor and our diaphragm, um, when they're, when they're working in synchrony, they actually massage your intestines. There's, yeah. There are external massages we can do the I love you massage, just yes. to gently start to encourage the gut to move along. Right. Things like using the squatty potty or raising your knees. I love your... it. I love the squatty potty. Okay. Everybody. I know I gave one to my mom and my mother-in-law for Christmas and they're like, Ha, ah, thanks. What is this? I'm like, guys. And you know what's funny? And then three weeks later, they're probably like, you changed my life. <laughs> and and it's funny because my mom says, I don't have any problem going to the bathroom. I'm like, me neither. But trust me, when you sit on this, it will just make it easier and faster. And like it's all good. <laughs> so yes, we definitely have a couple around our house. That said, um, I remember going to, um, and, and I talk about poo a lot with my clients too. So there's the Bristol stool chart. Mm -hmm. So tell us what should our poo be looking like? Because a lot of us, we don't want to talk about this and a yeah. lot of us actually don't know. So can you tell us what should it look like? So the Bristol stool chart, I wish I had one right in front of me, but I don't. But, um, it, you know, there's num it, they go through different numbers and different stool types. And it ranges from like the rabbit pellets, like hard, small pellets, right. all the way to liquid form. And mm -hmm. we don't want it really to be on your, your stool to be on either end. Right. What we're really looking for is like, I call it like toothpaste, right? right. Like nice, a nice soft. Exactly. <laughs> the S shape. Exactly. Or like, or like a log, a, a, a log like a, a, not a log of pellets stuck together, but a softer right. grouping. Right. And that's, we call it type three or type four. Mm -hmm. On either side, we're either looking, we're looking at co on constipation very frequently, or we're looking at, um, at issues around um, poor fluid and food and nutrient uptake. Like there's on either side, it's an indication that things are probably not functioning well in your gut and from mm -hmm. your musculature. Right. And when you said you could poop once a day, but still be constipated, I'm thinking that's probably people who are pellet poops, right? Yeah. Or even, or even just a smaller, a smaller type three. Um, but we've, you know, we really want people to be having, um, both kinds of fiber in their diet. So there's soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. Right. And uh, the easiest way to get that is to just have like an apple a day I know. Mm -hmm. keeps the doctor away also keeps the poo in the toilet like so right. they you know an apple has both the soluble and insoluble fiber mm -hmm. but we can't have fiber without water mm -hmm. um, a lot of people a lot of my clients are coming to be like I'm having fiber one I'm this and I'm that and they're not drinking enough fiber uh enough water or they're drinking 
water in a way where it's they're like just chugging water and then they're dehydrated so we almost oh. overwhelm the system with water right it creates a stretch reflex in the bladder and they pee most of it out and their body doesn't actually utilize it right and what that does when you're having fiber and you're not taking in water continuously throughout the day is it actually almost creates cement in mm-hmm. your intestines right. so when we start to integrate like just sipping water throughout the day and adding in a little bit of fiber that's when people come in, they're like, oh, I didn't realize I was constipated, right? Yes. Because in our mind, constipated means not going to the bathroom for six days in a right. row. Um, not that we're not fully evacuating. Mm-hmm. And that's when you start to see like bloating and gas and that kind of buildup is often tied to, uh, you know, a microbiome, gut microbiome stuff, but also a backup of stool. Mm-hmm. And this um, also affects diastasis recti. So same thing, a lot of my clients, um, I just remember one of my clients, Julie, she barely ate anything. She was on stool softeners and not drinking enough water. And, you know, I said, okay, you need to start drinking water. Just start eating, start eating. Like I know you're a mom, but you've got to eat three meals a day, not just one. And as soon as we did that within one or two weeks, she's like, oh my gosh, I don't need the stool softeners anymore. And look at my belly. I'm like, cause you are so backed up and you just looked like, you know, belly distended and just bloated. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and you know, diastasis is such a fascinating realm. We could talk probably for a whole hour on that, but it really, when people come in and they're like, "I want to rehab my abs," the the belly that we have postpartum is so complex. It's mm-hmm. you know, you're, there's uh, there are people who like we're going to rehab them amazingly, and they still might have a little bit of adipose tissue there. They'll have you know skin laxity. And they'll often, if there's a, a dysregulation in their microbiome, they might have bloating because, yeah, they're not eating. They're, you know, they're not eating enough to support their their um, caloric needs. They're not eating enough to ensure that their everything's moving through them. Like there's so many things, and when we start mm-hmm. to see um, clients who just have this have a belly. Um, and they're like, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. And they're trying to not eat because they don't want the belly. It's like not drinking because you don't want to leak. Right. Hydration causes leaking and not eating caught. Like it's so fascinating that our bodies truly need stuff from us. And mm-hmm. we need to be eating. We need nutrients. We need water and yeah. things work better when we feed ourselves well. Yes. Right? Yes, exactly. Thank you for that. And Hannah, we'll wrap up here. Hannah, can you tell everybody where they can find you? Yes, I can. Uh, You can follow me at uh, Hannah Ross PT on Instagram. Uh, You can follow my clinic, Vital Physiotherapy and Wellness on Instagram. And you can um, find out more about pelvic health physio, what we do at vitalphysiotherapy.com. And last question. Do you only see, um, because I know you're doing a lot more online now, are you, are you able to see Canadians, uh, you know, all over the, every single province and territory? Mm -hmm. So um, within Canada, there's, there, there's now changed some of the rules where you can get a, uh, you can get a license to see people inter, inter interprovincially. Right. Um, we are, we are licensed throughout all of Ontario. Right. Um, and we've had a number of, of clients who, you know, want to see us in other provinces. And so we just get in touch with their regulating college and, um, of that, of that province. And there's, it's, it's pretty easy to get, they, they recognize within the different. Provinces. Okay. So it's, I guess what, what I'm asking is, do you see other people in uh, the U S or any other country or just Canada? just primarily Ontario and Canada and in the U S it's complicated. Every single uh, state has its own rules. So some okay. will allow people who are regulated outside of the, of the state to provide therapy within the state and similar with other countries, some will, and some won't. Gotcha. Um, if anybody's interested, get in touch with that, get in touch with me and um, we can do some research. We, we are doing so much research on all these points. It's, it's fascinating. I'm sure. I'm sure. Cause as I said, I have a lot of American clients. I'm like, yeah, I got some people you could reach out. So hoping that, you know, you could work virtually in some capacity. So love it. 
love it. Awesome. Yeah, consult. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thank you.